Hello, welcome to Topper Machine. I'm Josh Topper. Today's job is one that's actually been sent in by one of my viewers. Um, and we're going to do it all here in the 18 inch Monarch lathe. So this job is a relatively simple one in some ways. This is a ball screw and it is hardened, which makes it a little more difficult. Um, I tried a test cut on it just to see how it would do. And it is so hard that it just chips out the thread. Now, the insert took it okay, but we are going to anneal this um, per the customer's instructions and then do all the machining to the print here. So we've got to turn this end down three and an eighth of inch down to 874 plus zero minus one. Uh, there's a keyway, there's a snap ring groove, there's another groove here. Um, so it, it's a pretty straightforward job. And then the other end is just a simple turn down and chamfer. And the reason I'm doing this in the 18 inch Monarch is because I have a collet chuck for it. This is a 2J Harding collet chuck. So we're back here in the weld shop. Um, my customer, him and I have discussed this, the way they used to do these to anneal them was just to heat them up with the torch and get them blue. And he said that would be enough to do it. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. We're gonna do one end at a time. Um, so I'll anneal it, go machine it, and then come back and do the short end. So we're going to do the long end first. Now I already marked the shaft out right here. This is as far as I need to go with annealing. I don't want to go any further. And we'll just warm that up till it gets blue. Work our way all the way around. And now we wait for that to cool. Well, now that it's finally cooled off, we got her in the collet chuck. I'm gonna go ahead and face it, center drill it, and then we'll move it out and start turning it down. I've just recently switched to these solid carbide center drills. I've been getting them from KVC Tools. And I absolutely love them. So See what that little bit of annealing does. I already touched her off, zeroed my digital readout. We'll just start it right there and beautiful. So that was per my customer's instructions. First pass done. I'll have to get the players and pull all them off. All right, just a quick measurement with the caliper, see where we're at, about 970. And we'll just take it down to about uh, eight, well, about 900. And then we'll switch to the micrometer and fine tune it. Now just a little warning on shafts like this is they get hot real quick because they're so small. So you're going to want to cool this um, and it's hot right now. I'm measuring 9057. So you're going to want to let that cool and then we'll recheck it and see where it's at. Alright so we're cooled off. 
905.3. So we shrunk four tenths. Um, so not a huge problem, but uh, definitely enough when you're trying to do precision that it, you don't want that shrinkage after you get spend all the time getting it to size and then it cools and you're undersized and now you got a problem. So we have 30 thousandths to go on just taking 20 on this pass and then we'll check it. Twelve thousandths to go. Now I know I said I had 12 thousandths to go, I only took 11, and I have 5 tenths to go, so we're just going to take emery cloth and just polish that in. Perfect. You check it in two places on the shaft just to make sure, maybe three, depending on how long it is, so that you know if you have a taper. I have no taper, so we are perfect. Okay, so the next things this drawing calls out is this groove here, 253 thousandths wide by 624 diameter inside, and then this other one, 46 thousandths wide, plus three, minus zero, uh, the 253 is plus 3 minus 0 also, um, and that groove must be just for a snap ring. But what I do not see on this drawing is a call out for the chamfer um, on either end. So I think what we're going to do is we'll just go ahead and put a chamfer on it that looks very similar to that. Um, usually it's a 30 degree chamfer, which um, works out for most people. So. We'll go ahead and do that chamfer next. All right, that looks good. All right, I'm gonna cut this big groove first. Um, and as you can see, it's an inch and a half from this shoulder. Now, 1.5, you go over here in the drawing, there's usually uh, um, the tolerances. And I know it's hard to see. Two decimal places is plus or minus 30 thousandths. And the distance from the end is three and an eighth, which is, let's see, fractional, plus or minus a hundred thousandths. Well, I always tend to hold closer to, you know, say a decimal. So I always held 3.125 on this one. So I'm gonna actually just calculate out my distance from the end. I'll touch off, come over, and then cut the groove, giving me that inch and a half with my eighth inch cutter and then I'll move over and cut and then we'll get our depth and our width of our groove. So 0 0.253 plus three minus zero and 624 uh, minus two plus zero. So we just start here, touch off our tool. Just heard it touch there, zero the readout. We're gonna come over 1.625 which will leave me 1.500, but the print is saying I have plus or minus 30 thousandths, so um, it's not a critical dimension apparently, but I will treat it as such. And then I'm just gonna touch off my insert just a tiny bit. Zero the readout again. Now we're going in a quarter inch, but we're gonna stop short um, at about 200 thou, 225 thou. Because this is an eighth inch wide cutter, 
I'm going to move over now another hundred thousandths and take that cut again. I'm just gonna measure the inside here to see how, where we're at. And we are right where I thought we would be. So we're gonna go ahead and just plunge in that last uh, 25 thou and we'll be good to go. And I'm just gonna turn it over by hand and flatten out the bottom of that hole. Two more thou out of the bottom. Oh, just a quick check of my groove. And it is measuring 225 thousandths, which is what we had, uh, I had originally planned on. So I need another 28 thousandths to 31 thousandths to go for width. So I'll go ahead and I'm gonna take 29 and that should give us, get us right within our tolerance range. And just with our caliper, we are perfect. Now I'll cut the little groove that goes here. So here is my 46 thousandths wide ground high-speed steel cutter. I always have a couple of these around, all ground up, ready to go, um, because little uh, snap ring grooves like this come up quite frequently. So we'll go ahead and put this one in and cut the groove. Okay, and that's most of the work done on this end. I'm just gonna hit the corner here with the file just to knock that sharp burr off, even though the print doesn't say anything about knocking burrs. And I'm just gonna flatten out, knock any burrs off of the rest of it here. That feels good. All right, so I'm back here in the weld shop again, and I need to get my length, which is 41 and a quarter, but the bar, the rod here is 48 and a quarter, and I need to finish it at 41 and a quarter long. So I'm gonna make a mark here for my heat to uh, anneal it. I'm gonna go a little long, 41 and a half, and then I'm finishing off an inch and a half of the other end which we're taking it down just past four, 39 and a half. So we're gonna anneal this portion right here so we can saw it off and then do the work on the other end. And again, we let her cool nice and slow. All 
All right, so I'm just going to touch off and take a light pass and face that end off just enough to uh, get a measurement. Now we'll get out the little caliper and measure this thing. This is a Starrett 123 50 inch vernier caliper. Isn't that a thing of beauty? And we'll measure our overall length and see where we're at. 41 inches, 324 thousandths. So we got 74 thousandths to take off the length to get our 41 and a quarter. So we're back in the lathe. I'm just gonna lightly touch it. Right there, zero my readout. And we're gonna take Take that in two passes, so I'm going to take 40 and then 34. And because that was a fractional on the drawing, it um, is plus or minus 100 thousandths. Obviously, we are going to be way closer than that. Again, we center drill it with the uh, KVC solid carbide center drill. And this end gets turned down an inch and a half, fractional of all things, to that 874 also. So all I'm going to do is run it down here, give myself a little stop mark, and we'll start cutting. I have about 90 to go. I'm taking 60 on this pass and then we'll cool it and uh, take a light cut and then check it and finish it off. And we have 10 thousandths to go. We're about six tenths away, so we'll polish that in with the emery cloth. Right on the money. The last thing I want to do is just kind of polish it lightly to get that heat discoloration. I don't want to send stuff out with looking like crap. Much nicer, just a little bit of color down in there, but much nicer. So we're on the last step of the drawing here, and that's putting the keyway in it. It's seven eighths of an inch from the end of the part to the edge of the radius here, and it is a three sixteenths by three thirty seconds keyway. Well, I guarantee the customer isn't going to be happy if I go by the fractional um, tolerances and plus or minus a hundred thousandths. So 
I know for a fact how my cutters cut and a 3 16 end mill, which I got in there, generally cuts about one thou under. And I've never had a complaint about that. So the key fits in there nice and snug. It doesn't fall out when you put it together. So we're gonna go ahead and just touch it off. Zero the knee, come over, crank it up the 330 seconds, um, probably plus a couple thou just for depth to make sure we're good and then touch it off, zero the readout and come in the seven ace. And I am actually gonna try using the anchor lube as my lubricant for this because that is their claim to fame as hard to machine materials. And this is a harder material. So we're gonna see how it performs just on this keyway. Okay, so I just lightly touch to the part with the quill. I don't bring it down a long ways, lock it. The knee is zeroed, I'll back it off a little. Crank it out the end, and then back up, and that's 93 thousandths, 94, we're going to go 95 just to be safe. I'll go ahead and start it up, bring it over, touch it off. There it is, zero the readout, and we can start cutting. Now, if you're concerned about your key measuring it afterwards, you use a couple gauge blocks. I've got 186 thousandths here, and that just fits. A 187 wouldn't quite fit, which is perfect. That will give you a little bit to tap that key in, lock it in for, for uh, holding it in place while you assemble the, the machine. So there it is, all done. Well, there she is, all done. Um, a precision ground hardened ball screw modified for uh, the customer's needs. And this was actually sent in again by one of my viewers um, from his company to make these for him and do a video on. He asked me to, specifically asked me to do the video on it. And again, thank you, Bill, for sending this. This was a fun job and, and hopefully a good learning experience for everybody watching to, with the drawings, um, going through that and, and just seeing how to start with something that's hard and soften it up a bit to machine it. So I hope you enjoyed, and if you got jobs you want to see done on, on video, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, and with that, we'll end here. So until next time, get out in your shop and get it done right the first time.